let's apply unitary transformations to Hamiltonians. We're going to be using unitary transformations to move from one reference frame to another reference frame that is more convenient to describe the time evolution of a quantum mechanical system. We're going to start off with the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation tells us that the Hamiltonian operator, h, acting on a state, psi, is equivalent to i h bar times psi dot, where this dot notation denotes the time derivative. So this describes the time evolution of a quantum mechanical system given that we know this, this h over here, which is the Hamiltonian operator. We want to move to another frame which describes the same time evolution but from a different perspective. And in that separate frame, what we need is that this form of the equation has to be preserved. So that means h prime acting on psi prime has to be equal to i h bar psi prime dot. So this prime uh, notation tells us that we are in this transformed frame. How do we go from this frame to this frame? Well, it's with a unitary transformation. So to go from here to here, what we have to do is define psi prime to be equal to u times psi. And u is our unitary transformation. And if we want to go back the other way, what we have to do is define psi to be equal to u dagger times psi prime. So if you want to go from this frame to this frame, you apply u. And if, you're going to, if you want to go reverse backwards, then you have to apply u dagger. And this dagger denotes the Hermitian adjoint. Let's write down the property of this unitary operator. What makes it unitary? Well, by definition, it has to satisfy this relationship. We need u, u dagger to equal u dagger u. And this has to be the identity operator denoted by capital I. Another way of writing this is u dagger equals u inverse. So the inverse is the same as taking the Hermitian adjoint. So this defines our unitary operator. In general, this unitary operator can depend on time. And the Hamiltonian can depend on time in general as well. So we have to take that time dependence into account. Let's derive a relationship between h prime and h. So first, what we can do is write down h prime followed by u, the unitary operator. And we're going to act on that. Uh, we're going to take, take this combination of operators. We're going to act on psi, which is the state. And what we can do is we can group u psi together, and that is defined to be psi prime. So this is the same as h prime psi prime. And now that we have this relationship, we can see that this, by the Schrodinger equation, is equivalent to i h bar psi prime dot. And this psi prime, we can unpack, and we can rewrite this as i h bar times the time derivative of u psi. So u psi is exactly the same as psi prime. And this dot notation is just shorthand for the time derivative. So now we have the derivative of a product. We have this product over here. So that means we have to use the product rule for differentiation. Let's first apply the derivative to psi. So that's going to give us psi dot. And we're going to let this uh, unitary operator remain unchanged. So this is equal to the unitary operator times i h bar psi dot. You can see that I just moved these constants in over here. And that's OK. Constants can be commuted. But operators and states, you can't commute those guys. Those are, in general, non-commutative. So you have to be careful uh, when, uh, when you're swapping the order of these types of quantities. But this is just a numerical constant. h bar is just a, a fundamental constant that we can move around. And you can see I've specifically chosen to group it in this way. And there is also another term I can add to this. And that is the term where the time derivative acts on the unitary operator. So we leave psi alone, and we just act on this u. So that's going to give us i h bar u dot psi. OK, so that is the two terms that we get. And what we can do is we can identify this over here. And this, by the Schrodinger equation, 
is actually equivalent to h psi. So that gives us the following. We have u h psi, and then we have plus i h bar u dot psi. And you see that there is a psi here and a psi here. We can factor that psi out to the right. And that gives us the following relationship. We have u h plus i h bar u dot, and we're acting with this combination of operators on the state psi. And now what we can do is we can just read off from here and here. We can see that there are some uh, relationships that are equivalent. So this combination of operators acting on psi is equal to this combination of operators acting on psi. So let's write that down. We have h prime times u, that is equivalent to u h plus i h bar u dot. So that is what we have found using this manipulation over here. So we found that this combination of operators is equal to this combination of operators. Now what we can do is we can act with u dagger to get rid of a u if we don't want that u to be there. If we want to isolate h prime, we can act with u dagger from the right hand side. So from the right, we need to act on all of these terms with u dagger. And if we do that, this u is going to get cancelled by the u dagger because u and u dagger, they undo each other. That is this property over here. So that's going to give us h prime is equal to u h u dagger. And then we're going to have plus i h bar u dot u dagger. So we have found a relationship between h prime and h. This is how you transform the Hamiltonian. If you know what the Hamiltonian is in this frame, and you know what your unitary transformation is, all you have to do is compute this, and this will give you h prime. And this is the Hamiltonian in the transformed frame. Now let's see how we can go back. If we know what h prime is, and we want to go back to h, let's see what the procedure is for that. So instead of applying u dagger from the right, what we can do is we can apply u dagger from the left. And if we apply u dagger from the left, we're going to get this relationship. We're going to get u dagger h prime u, so we still have this u over here, and then over here, the u dagger is going to cancel with this u. So we're just going to be left with h, and then we're going to have plus i h bar u dagger u dot. You can see these guys are in the opposite order now. u dagger is on the left, and u dot is on the right. But we want to isolate this h, and if we isolate that h, what we're going to get is we just move this to the other side. So we can Put, this, uh, put a minus sign on this and move it over to the other side. And so what we're going to have is h is equal to u dagger h prime followed by u, and then we're going to have minus i h bar, and finally we're going to have this combination, u dagger u dot. So this combination tells us how to go the other way. So we have this equation over here, so I'll put this, uh, I'll put a little blue box around this. This equation is very important. It tells us how to go uh, from this frame to this frame. And this equation over here tells us how to do the reverse. That's how we go back. So if we know what h prime is, and we know what the unitary transformation is, this will allow us to get back the original Hamiltonian in this frame. You can see that both of these relationships depend on u dot. So there is a time derivative of the unitary operator. So we need to find the time derivative of the unitary transformation in order to transform the Hamiltonian. But what if we're looking at a special case? So consider the special case where u dot is equal to zero. So if u dot is equal to zero, then we have no time dependence on this unitary operator. So for that case, we can just ignore the term that has u dot. And that means that h prime is going to be equal to u h u dagger. And for h, we're just going to have the opposite order of the u and the u dagger. We're going to have u dagger h prime u. So all we have to do is swap this u and u dagger around. 
And what we're doing is we're sandwiching the Hamiltonian in between two unitaries. And those unitaries happen to be Hermitian adjoints of each other. So this is how you would transform if there was no time dependence. And this is just a special case of these two general transformations. So in this video, we have seen how to take the time evolution in one frame and transform it into a time evolution that is in a different frame. We are describing the same quantum mechanical system. So the Hamiltonian is the same Hamiltonian that describes the same physical system. We are just looking at this physical system from two different perspectives. We're looking at in this non-primed frame, and we're looking at it from this primed frame. And the way to transform between these frames is with a unitary transformation. And if you want to go back, all you have to do is you take u dagger and you apply it to the state. So this is how the states transform, and this is how the Hamiltonian operator transforms. You can see that the way to transform the states is a lot simpler, because all you have to do is act with a unitary on the state. But if you want to transform operators like the Hamiltonian, you have to sandwich it, and you also have to add in these extra terms that account for the time derivative of the unitary transformation. In the next video in the quantum mechanics playlist, we're actually going to be using these relationships to transform Hamiltonians. You can find the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.